Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the UML collaboration diagram. Actually, this UML collaboration diagram is a behavioral diagram. And the collaboration diagram is used to show the relationship between the object in a system. Both the sequence diagram and collaboration diagram represents the same information but in a different manner. Instead of showing the flow of messages, it depicts the architecture of the objects residing in the system as it is based on object-oriented programming. An object consists of several features. Multiple objects present in the system are connected to each other. The collaboration diagram, which is also known as a communication diagram, which is used to portray the object's architecture in a system. So next we are dealing with the different notations of a collaboration diagram and the different notations include first of all the object. The representation of an object is done by an object symbol with its name and the class underlined separated by a colon. In the collaboration diagram, the objects are utilized in the following way. That is, the object is represented by specifying their name and class. It is not the mandatory for every class to appear. A class may constitute more than one object. In the collaboration diagram, firstly, the object is created and then its class is specified. And finally, to differentiate one object from another object, it is necessary to name them. So these are the different factors associated with objects. And when we come to the term actors, in the collaboration diagram, the actor plays the main role as it invokes the interaction. Each actor has its respective role and name. In this, one actor initiates the use case. Third one is links. The link is an instance of association which associates the object and actors. It portrays a relationship between the object through which the messages are sent. It is represented by a solid line. The link helps an object to connect with or navigate to another object such that the message flows are attached to links. When we come to the term messages, it is a communication between the object which carries the information and includes a sequence number so that the activity may take place. It is represented by a labeled arrow which is placed near a link. The messages are sent from the sender to the receiver and the direction must be navigable in that particular direction. The receiver must understand the message. So these are the different notations used in a collaboration diagram. Then there arise a question when we have to use a collaboration diagram. The collaboration diagrams are used when it is essential to depict the relationship between the object. Both the sequence and the collaboration diagram represent the same information but the way of portraying it is quite different manner. The collaboration diagrams are best suited for analyzing use cases. Following are some of the use cases enlisted below for which the collaboration diagrams is implemented. Firstly, to model the collaboration among the object or roles that carry the functionalities of use cases and operations. Secondly, to model the mechanism inside the architectural design of the system. Third one is to capture the interaction that represents the flow of messages between the object and the role inside the collaboration. Fourth one is to model different scenarios within the use case or operations involving a collaboration of several objects and interactions. Fifth one is to support the identification of objects participating in the use case. And sixth one is in the collaboration diagram, each message constitutes a sequence number such that the top level message is marked as one and so on. The messages sent during the same call are denoted with the same decimal prefix but with the different suffixes of one, two, etc. as per their occurrences. Now we deal with the steps for creating a collaboration diagram. That is first of all, determine the behavior for which the realization and implementation are specified. Secondly, discover the structural element that are class roles objects and subsystems 
for performing the functionality of collaboration that is choose the context of an interaction between system subsystem use case and operation and thirdly think through alternative situations that may be involved that is implementation of a collaboration diagram at an instance level if needed and specification level diagram may be made in the instance level sequence diagram for summarizing alternative situation so these are the different steps for creating the collaboration diagram next we deals with what are the benefits of a collaboration diagram the collaboration diagram is also known as a communication diagram it mainly puts the emphasizes on the structural aspect of an interaction diagram that is how the lifelines are connected third one is the syntax of a collaboration diagram is similar to the sequence diagram just the difference is that the lifeline does not consist of tails fourth one is the messages transmitted over sequencing is represented by numbering of each individual messages fifth one is the collaboration diagram is semantically weak in comparison with the sequence diagram and the special case of collaboration diagram is the object diagram so in the one is it focuses upon the elements and not the message flow like the sequence diagram since the collaboration diagrams are not expensive the sequence diagram can be directly converted into collaboration diagram and finally there may be a chance of losing some amount of information while implementing a collaboration diagram with respect to the sequence diagram so here comes the drawbacks of the collaboration diagram the drawbacks includes multiple object residing in the system can make a complex collaboration diagram as it becomes quite hard to explore the objects secondly it is a time consuming diagram and thirdly after program terminates the object is destroyed so this is the most worst case for developing a collaboration diagram and finally as the object state changes momentarily it becomes difficult to keep an eye on every single that has occurred inside the object of the system so these are the major drawbacks of a collaboration diagram so my dear students as we mentioned a collaboration diagram is used to show the relationship between the objects in a system so as the both the sequence and the collaboration diagram represent the same information but the difference is representing the way of presentation instead of showing the flow of messages it depicts the architecture of object residing in the system as it is based on object oriented programming so my dear students hope you had understood this topic so dear students kindly go through this assignment question and the question is write notes on uml collaboration diagram so my dear students in the upcoming lecture we will discuss an example for the uml collaboration diagram so dear students see you soon until then goodbye thank you and all the best